Hey, welcome back to Rust Sorter Garage as we continue on the 55 Buick POS Special Turbo Build. Let's see if we can get something else off the list. All right, let's take a look. Where are we? Well, haven't done much, really. <laughs> uh, what do we got? Fuel system. I would call that done. Uh, let's see here. Let's knock off some of these things on the list. How about, I would like to do injectors. I would like to do spark plugs. I would like to do map sensor. And how about IAT? That should be good for actually one video, but probably two days, because I don't have a whole lot of time out here today. All right, so let's just go through this one thing at a time. First thing I'm gonna change is the map sensor. Uh, this is a two bar map sensor that I bought from On Performance, On 3 Performance, sorry. And uh, I got it off their website and there's no sticker on it or the part number. It's probably a GM part, but I bought it from them. It wasn't expensive. And there's the numbers to put in on the tune for the two bar sensor because that has to be changed in the tune or it's not gonna work. So, should be simple enough, let's swap that out. All right, that sensor just has hot rod truck. Matt sensor just has a couple clips holding it in place. And sometimes they're broken. They're actually okay on this one. So I just pry them back with my fingers, undo the wiring, and there's a GM map sensor. All right, installation of the ON3, just as simple. Connect the wires. Snap it in or push it in. And that's that. Another thing off the list. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, I think, is relocate the IAT sensor, which I have hanging loose here on the eBay harness. But I've seen people remove the EVAP solenoid there off the top of the engine and put the IAT there. So, never done it before, gonna give it a shot. That will remove the EVAP solenoid. Eight millimeter head bolt. And it's got a little clamp to it. It's actually a little top. Let me see if this comes out. Oh, ooh, that was easy. Okay. No clamp. It's just got that rubber section there and an o-ring seal on the solenoid to fit in there and it is a different size what i'm wondering is how do they do it i've seen people dremel this out i've seen people uh i guess i would try to file this down and what would be really good would be to get that O-ring seal, that O-ring off of here and put that on the IAT sensor. All right, I realized that was out of frame. I don't usually zoom in with my phone, but uh, it was out of vision. <laughs> out of frame for seeing what I was looking at there with the sensor. But basically the EVAP solenoid has an O-ring seal on it. And the diameter of the IAT is a little bit bigger than this now it looks like just the end of this is kind of mushroomed so i'm going to file down the end and try to get it to fit and uh, as silly as it is this won't fit into the, the this drill <laughs> it'll probably fit in my half inch milwaukee but i'm not going to dig that out i'm going to put this in the lathe silly as it is and just put a file on it and see if i can take that down a little bit well the lathe has uh Good as that might have sound, didn't work very well because the, the files I have are apparently dull or whatever. They didn't work. So we're going to get stupid. 
put the cutoff wheel here and use that to take this down. All right, so I took that down some, filed it to smooth it out, and I took the O-ring and rolled it up the body here. Now this fits snug into the intake, so I'm gonna have to tap it in and then the O-ring should make the seal. I don't know if I would do it this way though in the future. I think it might be better just to put a grommet in the IAT, uh, you know, the intake air tube going to the engine and put it there rather than do this. We'll see if this works. But uh, I don't know. We'll see how. We'll see what happens. All right. We'll see what happens here. I put some black RTV on it as well. Just don't know if this is the best way to do it because if you have to replace it. It might be a little pain to get out. All right, so that's in there good. O-ring seal, little RTV, interference fit. And just because of overkill, I made a little lockdown tab from a body shim and a washer. And uh, that'll hold it in under boost, whether it's needed or not. There's the clamp installed. Do I need it? I don't know, but I tend to overdo things. Just one less thing to worry about. So continuing on, where are we at? All right, we'll call that done. Map sensor, call that done. Uh, I gotta change the spark plugs and the injectors. I think I'll change the spark plugs, and uh, but I won't bore you with changing them but I'll show you what I got. All right, so for spark plugs, first off, disclaimer, I am not a drag racer. I have drag raced. I am not a dedicated racer, nor do I claim to be. This is based on recommendations of the guys who run turbos and seem to have success with them. These are NGK 4177s. Uh, they are colder than stock. And the other number on them is TR6. Here's a look at the plugs. Nothing special, not iridium, it looks like, or anything. They're just, what are they? V power. And I'm going to gap these to 30 thousandths and go with that. All right, so before I put the new ones in, I just pulled one of the originals out and you can see the slight difference in porcelain there. It's not a whole lot, but the new plug, the porcelain looks like it's a little shorter, so you can tell it's a colder plug. And I've got these gapped to 30 thousandths and the originals are probably closer to 50 thousandths, but the uh, tighter gap is to prevent spark blowout under boost. And the colder plug is to help prevent detonation. So let's get these installed and we'll come back. All right, spark plugs are swapped. Where's my marker? Done. One more thing off the list. Most of them are pretty easy. This side was very easy, nothing to it. The log side, <laughs> number eight was easy. Number six was a pain. Two and four were more of a pain, but uh, yeah, they're done, not a big deal. All right, next thing on the list. Next on the list is gonna be to put in the decap fuel injectors, but that's gonna be tomorrow because I got some other stuff to do. So, see you tomorrow. All right, it is the next day. Jumped ahead a little bit, removed my fuel rails, 
removed all my uh, stock injectors, opened up my box of decaps that have been sitting in a box for a year. And uh, I got these from Eric Durr. He's a great guy. He's the usual person that people use to get decaps. And uh, he sends out a nice chart with all the information for the injectors. And these are averaging 81, 82 pounds, which is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is install, I have, most of them are 81. I have three that are 82.5. I'm going to put the higher rated ones on cylinders seven and eight in the back. Those are known to be, I guess, issues with distribution. And those are the cylinders that'll pop first if it goes lean. And then maybe I'll just put the other one on number five, but I'm going to install them. I can see that he used a silver marker and labeled them all for me. So, get these installed on the rails. All right, injectors are all installed on the rails. And I'm back to my crude test fixture. If you haven't figured out by now, I'd rather spend a little time before each step testing so there's no surprises later so i talked to eric and i said hey you know i've got these injectors i bought a year ago you think they're going to be okay sitting and he thought they'd be fine so i'm just gonna make sure they're all spraying and i don't have any that like stuck open from sitting i know he cleans them good and there's not going to be anything in here i would think that would cause them to stick open or anything but i'm just gonna fire each one make sure it turns on and make sure it doesn't stay on after i turn off the power all right i got my amazon uh fuel injector pulse thing there let me turn on my fuel pump All right, so I've got fuel running through the rails from my, what do you want to call it, <laughs> remote path fuel system <laughs> that you see me use on many of the cars. Let's try this. Let's see. Now I have to remember, what were my modes? Let's try, I don't know, mode one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of fuel. <laughs> All right. And it's not stuck on, which is the most important. Oh, here we go. All right, they are all good. They all pulse, and none of them are dripping. Okay, fuel injectors back on the engine. So decaps are installed, all wired back in. Nothing to it. To the list. One more thing off. All right, let's see what we're looking at next. Okay, what do we got here? Catch can, that's one of the last things to do. Mount the turbo with the oil feed and the drain. Wastegate, blow off, that stuff's after turbo. Back lines after turbo. Pressure gauge can later. Exhaust after turbo. Hood after turbo. Wideband after turbo. Air filter and gauge. All after turbo. So, looks like this is going to be what the next video is going to be. All right, so that is actually going to be it for this one. I uh, only had a couple hours out here to work is what it is one thing at a time the project will get done plus the fact that earlier i got some crap in my eye i gotta go flush that out because it's bothered me <laughs> pretty bad so at least we got okay uh, i guess what three or four things done off the list today so that's good or not today today yesterday and today so next ones are going to be the biggie mount the turbo oil drain oil feed all new to me 
talk a little about what turbo I got, whether it's the right one. I don't know, but we're going to see. Uh, so I guess it'll be it for this. Also, I want to say I noticed I got a lot of new subscribers lately. Thank you very much for those who subscribed. I really appreciate it. Uh, that motivates me even more to get out here and get this stuff done because it's actually fun to share this stuff. All right, we will see you on the next one. Later.